Well, I'm just gonna show you guys real quick um, our water system. So this, these four tanks up here on the top level uh, are where the water is pumped from the lake. Um, it then goes, we open one of them at a time, and then the water comes down through these two tubes, passes through these two sediment filters, and then is stored in these two tanks below. Um, eventually, within the next week or so, uh, we will have a water catchment, a roof, um, hanging from these, these four pillars here, which will uh, not only be able to capture all of the rain, um, so that we can have some of these tanks be, ex be used exclusively for rainwater and the other ones for lake water. Um, but then it'll also shade this environment as well um, because these rotoplasts are black, they absorb a lot of heat. Um, so to keep the, keep the water cool, uh, we will construct this, this roof area here. Uh, is these um, will only open one up at a time. Uh, and just a little tiny bit so there's not a lot of pressure coming through here so the water trickles through the filter um, you know maximizing basically the the, the filters uh, efficiency and, and effectiveness really above all otherwise there's so much weight here and so much water that it'll push through both of the filters so we just kind of open one up a little bit uh, and, and they stay they stay full so like on all of these these also have the shutoff valves so the little float at the very top. So once the water gets up to a certain level, it'll, it'll shut off. And so if this one shuts off, then this one will continue filling and vice versa. So right now, if it's raining, those get filled up. You use those. If it's not raining, you can fill those up. Right. And use lake water. Right. So my original idea was to have both of these. This was catching rainwater. We've shut it we're going to take this down when we have the actual roof with the, the with the laminus um, on there um, but keeping these two for rainwater and then the two back ones for for lake water um, and using as much rainwater as we can always preferring rainwater over lake water but in the in those months where it's raining but we still don't have enough for our personal consumption we'll have to use use both valve which uh, was once down there uh, but allows us to open this main tube allowing lake water or rain water whatever is being held up there um, to run directly into the bathroom complex below without going through this filter uh, that we're, we're going to see next so here it's op it's closed at the moment um, which means all of the water water pressure from above is is bringing the water through this tube which is then buried underneath the ground and it runs sort of along this contour in this hill and then goes through a second filter um, which which I'll which I'll show you but this just gives us so here is the second filter uh, this water comes from above as well um, passes through this filter here and then can be diverted into one of these two tanks. These are also hooked up, as you can see, to the rainwater catchment and these the gutters here. Um, so what we usually do is keep one of these closed and one of these always catching rainwater. So we have one filled with rainwater and one filled with uh, filtered lake water. So uh, in case it doesn't rain for a few weeks, we can open up the reserve of lake water, but it has already been filtered at this point twice, um, and then have, have rainwater being stored. So we only open up one of these at a time. This one currently is, is open, um, and so we'll let this water drain out. Oftentimes, if there is sediment and stuff that's gotten through you know, this, this cloth filter up top from the rain, we have an opportunity to clean it out then. Uh, but just basically go back and forth between these two tanks um, using as much rainwater as we possibly can and saving the, the lake water. And here with this filter, it requires us to change it, um, you know, once a month. So unscrew this and it's sort of like a, a fiber optic system on the inside where the, the water has to pass through very, very tiny tubes um, and take that out. And, and rinse it really well. You either soak it in a, in a bleach solution or some other type of disinfectant for a day or two um, and then screw it back in. 
basically just put a shirt on top to filter the water that's being caught from the, the roof and the gutter system. And we usually change this shirt every, every two, three days and this screen right here. It's amazing how much sediment actually falls from the trees and um, the atmosphere when it's raining. So just keep this as clean as possible. Um, and it wouldn't be a bad idea even to, to double it up. Put two shirts down. Uh, crack the code and, and figured out how to open these up. Um, open them? Yeah, we didn't. What's that? Oh yeah. So it was it was a good thing we did. They have the same design as that filter yeah, out back, uh, yeah. with all the little like fiber optic tubes or something. A little finer. Um, but, you know, once we took them out and cleaned them and rinsed them in a bleach solution and put them back in, this whole thing started functioning much better. Okay. So it was, you know, at points, at points like just dripping out of the top. Um, but so the water that's already been filtered twice from the lake and from the tanks up top, then comes down, runs the length of the property, and then, uh, passes through these two filters. Um, first through this activated carbon filter and then through one of these three um, fine, finer filters that has a similar design to the filter up above, um, like a fiber optic network um, that it has to pass through. So the water then comes through this filter, down through this tube, through the filter itself, and then up through this tube into this tank where it's stored. So these little filters Come unhooked pretty easily, and then come unscrewed. And then you can see there basically where the water has to pass through. So we take these out, and then you can see that a lot of the sediment that it's actually collecting are some of the fine, finer gr grains of activated carbon from this. Um, but in order to clean this, once again, we kind of set it in a mild bleach solution and, and, and shake it and let it soak for a day. Um, and then you can see... You don't pull it out from there. No, nope, you keep this, so this is, right can yeah. leave it in it and then sort of just shake it within the mild bleach solution and then all of those little gray particles that have been filtered out will, will come out in the water and you can see how much actually this is, this is catching from the water. Screw that back on there. Good discovery. More than enough water for us, the permanent residents, when we're here. Um, it usually stays about three fourths to, you know, 75 to 90 percent full while we're here. Uh, but during a yoga teacher training course or when there's 15, 20 people here, it will, you know, almost drain completely. And where does this water go? This water goes into the kitchen and there's one faucet outside of the bathroom complex that also has this water. But this water, uh, you know, is, is, is potable, um, can be consumed right from the tap, and is what we wash all of our dishes with.